Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. So uh, it is getting to that time of the season where it is time to start side dressing corn with anhydrous ammonia. So uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to set up our anhydrous applicator with a heat exchanger. Uh, we went on a road trip this morning down to Brookston, Indiana, down to Kelly Engineering, and uh, they set us up this beautiful heat exchanger. It has a flow control valve on it, and with this flow control valve and the 450 Ravens monitor in the cab of the tractor, we can now control our rates of anhydrous uh, very easily from the seat of the tractor. So when we're in the good ground, we'll apply extra. When we go up over a sand hill, we'll flip to our second rate and we'll apply less on the sand hills. Uh, with, with anhydrous being $1,600 a ton now, this will be a huge savings on our anhydrous bill. So this heat exchanger, the anhydrous will come through it and this will make it flow a lot better and more accurately because it will keep the anhydrous in its liquid form as it flows through here and there will be no vapor. Um, there is the electric shutoff valve here. This is what will turn it on and off. When you raise up at the end, you'll flip a switch, it'll shut it off. And we're also going to plumb in a regular hydraulic shutoff valve just for safety reasons also. There is a ball valve here to be able to shut off your tank. We are also installing a new manifold on our applicator. Our applicator now has the old style manifold that is just an open cavity inside. And the problem with that open cavity is the liquid flows through it, comes into it, and a lot of times it'll go out the path of least resistance towards the front of the manifold. With this manifold, it actually has to follow cavities and go out each individual port on it. So this will make it even more accurate. There's also a six inch pipe nipple in between here because they found that if you put this with a close up tight in here, the anhydrous will come out of here and it'll also force out the front of the manifold quicker than it'll force out the back side of the manifold. So uh, what we're doing right now is we have our toolbar here in the shop. Dad's strength and dad are going through and we're stripping everything off of it because basically all we are starting over with is the shanks, the gauge wheels, the colders, and the paint on the toolbar. We're going all new knives, we're going to a half inch size hose, and um, we're going to half inch tubes on our knives. Uh, that also helps with flow. And the problem with 3 8 tubes is when they put them on, sometimes they accidentally burn through them when they weld them to the uh, knives. So. This way, if you do get a, a knife that's got a little imperfection in the weld, it's not burned all the way through, or it's less likely it's burned all the way through and there's a restriction in the 3 8 tube, or half inch tube. So uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get everything stripped off and then we'll start putting all this together. We also went with, and we've been running radar on our tractors, and uh, we decided to throw the radar out the window and get rid of it and we have now went to GPS, and uh, this GPS will sense the actual speed that the tractor's going through the field. Um, you can't really run this off of the, the miles per hour in the dash of the tractor because that is inaccurate. Um, if the tractor is spinning, it's sensing that the wheels are, let's say you're spinning, the wheels are spinning five miles an hour, but you're only going a mile an hour forward, that will not, put on the accurate rate. This has nothing to do with that, so it just senses the speed that the tractor is actually moving. It's got nothing to do with the tire speed or anything like that. And these are a lot easier to use than the old style radars. Uh, the old style radars, even if a corn stalk or if a weed brush is passed it under the tractor, it can throw the speed off. So just a lot more accurate what we're doing now. So uh, let's get started, let's get this all put on, and we'll show you how it goes along the way. We also have a new style filter here uh, that will catch a lot more impurities out of the tanks, such as rust and just things like that. 
and it's also got a magnet in it so it'll catch even small particles. So let's get started, get this all put together. So before dad gets it completely stripped off, this is our old style regulator that we were using before. You have your hydraulic uh, shut off and turn on for your flow of your anhydrous. This is the old style uh, open cavity manifold that I was talking about. And in this regulator to control your rate, you'd have to turn it and set it. Well, the problem with that is, is you're not going to pull up to the sand hill while you're going through the field, get out of the tractor, walk around and turn that down and then go over the sand hill, get back in the good ground and get back out and turn it back up. So with this, all you have to do is flip a switch and it will do that for you with this new setup. So we're going to get all this off of here and then we'll start mounting our uh, new setup in here and then we'll get it all replumbed and uh, we'll get rid of that bird's nest right there also. Okay, so before I go ahead and I tear all of our old plumbing apart, I want to put a little safety disclaimer in this video. Make sure that before you tear anything apart, that you make sure everything is bled out. Uh, because anhydrous, for those of you that don't know, is very, very dangerous. It'll, it will kill you instantly. Yeah. It uh, will burn your lungs, it will burn your eyeballs out of your head. It is very nasty stuff to work with. So make sure that everything is bled out outside. You're wearing safety glasses and gloves and be very careful. So now this has sat outside since last season. So everything is definitely bled out. The valves have been opened up. We've made sure there is nothing left in it. But if this is something you're gonna do mid season, make sure that it's bled out before you even mess with it. Well. We're going to take all this off because we're going to start completely over. I was looking at it thinking maybe there was something I could salvage out of it, but eh, we just don't like it, so it's all gone. bar is pretty much stripped of all the old stuff. We've got no knives on it, no original hoses, except the hydraulic hoses. So now we can uh, start figuring out how we're going to mount this heat exchanger. It's probably going to have to sit crossways because it's about 60 inches long, fully assembled, and I don't think there's going to be enough space between here and here to mount it safely and properly, so it'll probably have to go on there crossways. So we've decided that the uh, new heat exchanger is going to sit back here on this square tube and it turns out that we can take these U-bolts that we just took out here and we're going to reuse them to mount its mounts to this tube. So Dad Strength and I will grab it, carry it over here, set it up here and have a look at it. And if we like it, we'll go ahead and we'll mount it and then we can start plumbing it up. Dad's already starting to put the new knives on. As you can see right here, nothing too exciting. He's just putting bolts in and tightening them up. So we're going to put the uh, knives on the ends are special because they have two tubes because we run a rate and a half to them. And then there will be two knives that have two vapor tubes on them that will go here somewhere towards the center of the applicator. They can't be in the tire tracks though. So we're gonna have to figure out where we're gonna put them exactly. Well, we got it where we like it. 
So now we're going to put our U bolts back in. Looks really good where it's sitting here. Got some of these good thick Lawson's washers to to uh, add a little bit of space because the threads on these U-bolts where they originally threw the other plate that the threads are a little bit rounded. rounded. So this will space us back up. So now all I gotta do is tighten it all back up. The add strength's gonna pull that over some because that's a little bit uh, it kicked out a little bit. Just straight where it's sitting when you tap it. Uh, it's pretty close. Tap it this way. Ooh, I don't think that's good right there. I don't want to go too far. I don't want to beat on that too much. So, if you set one of these up on your own, it is extremely important to get that valve in the right direction. Because that valve has a ball in there, and there's a weep hole in that ball. And it will actually allow ammonia to keep passing through this valve if it's in the wrong direction. And it'll keep coming out of your knives with your applicator. So that's something to pay attention to. This was actually, this was all actually assembled when we got there today. Because we called them yesterday and talked to them about it. The nice thing about this is the way they set it up is they put two unions. One here and one here. So if there's any problem with these two, you break them two unions and you can fish this out of the frame and you can just service those. You don't have to take it all apart to get it off. Okay, that was easy enough to mount. Didn't have to get too crazy with uh, fabricating some brackets. So now that we have our heat exchanger mounted, we can start with our plumbing. So we're going to come out of here. Our flow is going towards our applicator and towards our knives. So the next step is we're going to add in this hydraulic on-off valve. This T has a pop-off valve in it in case there is some anhydrous stuck between this valve and this valve. When that heats up, it expands. And without that pop-off valve there, it could blow these fittings apart from its expansion. So with that, it can't blow apart. So after we get this valve put in, this one will get plumbed to the tractor remote and it'll hydraulically turn it on and off when you actuate the remote. From there, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to plumb in our manifold. And then from our manifold, we will run a, uh, a tube from each one of these ports down to a knife and then there are also uh, the tubes for the double rates um, there's also an orifice in here and this orifice is adjustable it's already preset this orifice actually makes this heat exchanger work there will be a hose that runs from here to the end of the, the uh, heat exchanger there so I'll go ahead and uh, get all these fittings put together here, and then we'll uh, continue on with our video. So it's very important when you thread these fittings into these aluminum valves that you do not over tighten these because the way pipe thread works, for those of you who don't know, is it is a tapered thread. So the farther it threads in, the farther that it wants to push apart. So if you thread these in too tight, it will bust these aluminum valves. So just be careful. Don't get it as tight as you think you need to because you really don't. Now that I got this all fully assembled, I'm going to go through real quick and I'm going to tighten all these hose barbs up and uh, get our half rate fittings all put in. Uh, this will actually head towards the back of the tractor and these lines will run uh, the full length of the toolbar. So I figured just put them out straight. That'd be a good spot for it um, So all the lines that run off of here no matter where they go on the toolbar They are all the same length So we will have to cut the longest hoses out and then we'll measure all the rest of the hoses to match them hoses And then we'll just roll them up about the size of a basketball 
on the toolbar and that will ensure that every row has the equal amount of pressure to it. So I'm just going to take just some good pipe dope and put on these, tighten them up, and then uh, we will uh, take this over and being as we have that union right there we can just put it right back on and this part will be done. So the nice thing about all this being aluminum and stainless steel is from the filter on, we should never have any rust flaking issues or anything like that. So it'll be a very clean system. My pipe dope's about empty. I need to go get my other uh, thing of it out of my uh, tool truck. So this is a pipe dope that's rated for gas, which that's pretty much what we're working here. It's with a gas. I want to get that in the fitting. You got to take them pipe plugs out because this, this manifold actually has more ports than we really need. There is a um, hose barb out the bottom here. That will run to a hose, and that hose will run to a gauge that goes up on the fender of the tractor that Dad will be able to see out of his right side. Right out the window, it'll stick on a magnet and stick on a fender. So that'll be nice. He won't have to look back all the time to see what his pressure is. So I'll get all these tightened up, and we'll take it back. We'll put it on the applicator, and then we'll head the other direction, get the hose all put back on, and then we'll get all the hoses put on the knives. Well... Now that I got this all put together, now we can go ahead and put it back where it belongs. Get our union started here. At least try to. There, I got it started. So I'll have to get some uh, tools to get that union tightened up. Probably need uh, Dad Strength's help to help me hold this straight while I tighten it. You're right there. How are you not here right now? That looks pretty good right there. Get it straight. We'll just hand tighten it for now. That looks real nice. Now we want this to be as level as possible because we got to remember that this is a liquid coming through here. It's not a, it's not a gas or a vapor like a lot of people think. It is a liquid. So. The straighter we can have this, or level, the uh, more accurate it will come out of this manifold. All right, so now we're on the other end of the heat exchanger. So where we're gonna start now is we're gonna start at the filter and we're gonna work our way back to the tank. So our filter, we're gonna put a 90 in. We're gonna thread this hose into that 90. That is going to get our hose back over to our hitch because we, we would like it in the middle, but we would settle for one side. So we'll see how I can do that. I'll have to make a bracket to hold this hose. So this hose runs all the way back to the tank. This screws on the tank, and this is the valve. You, once you screw that on, you open that valve, and that feeds anhydrous to our heat exchanger and then through our knives. So this piece right here, for those of you that don't know, this is actually a safety so that if your hitch pin falls out and your safety chains break and all hell breaks loose, this jerks apart and it will stop the flow from coming out of this hose. So it's basically like a big hydraulic coupler in there. So it is a, it is a safety. So um, when I get all said and done, I need to mount this so this is up nicely with this bracket here. I'll have to fabricate something. So uh, let's get this put together here and then we'll work on that. Well, I got my fittings all pipe doped up here. So we're gonna go ahead and get these tightened up. Get this running in the direction that I want it to. These are Schedule 80 pipe fittings, so these are rather thick. These are thicker than you'll find in your hardware store. What you find in a hardware store is typically Schedule 40. So these are 
rated for gas and steam. So any, yeah, any sort of gas. Now the trick is I want to just turn this one without turning the rest of it. And we don't want to break anything. So we got to know when to stop. Let's see, that head straight. Right. Right there should be good. Okay, so those are tightened up. So let me show you something that I really like about this whole deal. Is this bleeder right here is to bleed this whole heat exchanger. And it will actually bleed all the way back to the tank if this valve is on. And it'll bleed all of this out. It'll actually bleed that too if that valve's on. Um, and the nice thing is, is as long as the applicator is down on the ground, it vents down through the knives. So it'll put it in the dirt instead of just releasing it in the air when you have to work on it. So I thought that was a pretty nice deal on this. And there's also a pop-off valve here too. So if this is full anhydrous and it gets hot out in the sun, and it expands, it won't blow any of this apart. It will relief through that pop-off also. So it's a very well thought out deal. It's a really nice system when it's all put together. I'm excited to use it. Dad's in the cab right now putting a Ravens monitor all in. We've got the uh, hockey puck speed sensor GPS up on the mirror bracket of the tractor. We've got it, uh, well you can't see it, but it's up there on top, so it's in a safe spot. So. Uh, Everything is going together rather nicely. It yeah, it should because it's all new, like Dad said. It's always nice working with new stuff when you get a chance to work with it. Most of the time, I don't get a chance to work with new stuff, but it is nice on the occasional time of getting to get any play with the new stuff. Okay, so Dad's strength's going to start welding up our pedestal here to hold our hose. I've got a piece over in the bench that I have to uh, drill some uh, holes in in order to rebolt that tab to. The tab will go on top of the pipe. We'll weld that up. Now I'm going to start drilling the, the holes in the tab that we need to bolt that to. So let me use a small drill bit first, drill some pilot holes here. Now I'm going to switch to my uh, step drill bit. I never knew my real one. Drill that out to half an inch. Oh, another step. There we go. So I'll drill the next hole out and then uh, we'll get this tab welded on. Right now, Dad Strength's working on some, uh, some gussets that we want to put on there just so if the tank does come unhooked that post will be nice and sturdy so when it jerks that hose apart it doesn't bend the post over or tear anything up it'll definitely jerk that hose apart well we got our hose all mounted really nice turned out really great um the only thing is I might need to turn this fitting a little bit to lay this hose over. It might retrain itself. But uh, the other thing I need to do real quick is I need to move this pin farther out. This is what Dad sticks the valve on uh, when, the, when the valve's not in use, when he's changing wagons. So I'm just going to take the evolution saw and nip that off real quick here. And we can reuse that.
once that cools, I'll grab it and uh, we'll re we'll re weld it on, and then uh, everything is done, other than plumbing all the hoses to the knives. And I got the gauge done. It goes up on the fender of the tractor. I'll show you that when we get to that. And then uh, we're ready to put some anhydrous on. So we're getting close to being done. Okay, so I got the pin welded back on for the valve to set on while we're switching tanks. It's just a nice holder for it. We actually have a tarp strap that'll hold it down to the hitch. So if we do go down the road with this, it can't bounce off. Um, I even added Dad a, a little loop over here to drop his hitch pin through so he doesn't have to worry about his hitch pin falling off while he moves from tank to tank and you don't have to throw it in the tractor cab. It's easy access right there. Grab it out and hook the tank up. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to grab the wiring for the uh, flow control valve and the on and off valve and I'm going to get it hooked up out here. Which it's very simple. Everything is plug and play. So let me adjust the camera. This uh, one anhydrous tube here, this isn't even hooked up yet. I just had it up there just for to look at it for now. I want to do the wiring real quick. Since Dad's already in the cab working on getting the monitor put in, I just want to do this real fast. And then I'm going to start plumbing everything up. So, very simple. Everything has its own corresponding plug-ins. Just got to figure out which one. Let's see, flow meter is this one. We need a control valve, which is this one. They're all labeled. Let's put these together. They should. Oh, there we go. They only plug in one way. And then you tighten a nut on them. And then we need a We need flow meter. Now see this wiring harness is also for, um, if this was used for like a liquid fertilizer. So it's got another control option plug-in. Like this one is for on off a valve for boom, but we don't use that. That's just for another application. Okay, now I can hand this up to dad in the tractor cab and he can hook this up to uh, his monitor and everything in the cab. So now I'm gonna start my actual plumbing of these hoses. So I've started here at the orifice and I'm going to run this hose down under here. Just a good place for it out of the way, safe place. Stuff's a little bit of a bear to work with sometimes, a little stiff. We're gonna run this under here and then we need to go back up to our heat exchanger which is over on this side and we're going we're going to hose clamp it pull it through here now i'm going to go back through and zip tie all this we're going to leave just a little bit extra in case we have an issue we'll have a little extra hose to use never hurts to leave a little extra Didn't need that. We'll just put it here on our heat exchanger. Tighten our clamps up, and that hose is done. Now we're going to move on to our vapor hoses that relieve the vapor out of the heat exchanger. We'll put one here, like so. We'll tighten that one up. Now we will connect the other end to our vapor tube on our knife. And this knife is outside of any tire tracks. Just work it down on there. Now I left extra hose in case this knife gets sheared, the bolts get sheared by a rock and it flips up and it kinks the tube really bad to the point where it breaks the tube. So by leaving extra hose, we can always pull some down and be able to reconnect it. You always want to leave some extra hose. Especially in our part of the world where we farm, we have tons of rocks. So it's always a good thing. 
and we'll strap this up and strap the extra up also. Okay, so the next hose I'm going to do is the one that runs up to the gauge beside the cab so Dad can see what the pressure is on everything. So I made this nice magnet, uh, magnet base mount for it. Should work out pretty good. Get my hose to do what I want it to do. Now we're back here at the manifold. We're going to take our hose that we ran up there to our gauge on our fender and we're going to put it in this port right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave some slack in this hose. That way, if we ever decide to put this toolbar on a, a different tractor, let's say like an 8420 or something, John Deere, that's a little bit longer tractor, uh, we will still have a little extra hose to do something different if we want to. Or if by chance we ever put it on like 8650 or something, this will at least get us up on the fender closer to the back of the cab. And it never hurts to have a little extra hose, like I said. If something gets pinched or something happens, you always have a little extra to work with. Never hurts to have some extra hose to work with. So... This will go here, and then when everything's said and done, like the wiring and all that, we'll do a nice uh, job of fastening it all. Like right now, I just got it hooked behind the lights just to hold it, but uh, I do want to go back through and and put some zip ties and make it make it a nice, you know, kind of a harness, if you will. The nice thing about these hose barbs is once you slide that hose on it's not coming back off. You're gonna to have to cut it off. So the, uh, the clamps really just act as a sealer to hold it tight around that hose barb. The hose barb alone will hold the hose on. Okay, so that does it for all of our plumbing as far as the heat exchanger itself. Now we can get on to plumbing each knife. And then, Tomorrow, I don't have the fittings off to get them tomorrow. We'll have to figure out our hydraulic plumbing for our hydraulic valve, which would be no big deal. I need to get a couple uh, elbows here and get that run towards the rear of the tractor. Okay, now we're going to start our plumbing for each individual knife. So what we're going to do is all these tubes need to be the same length. So... Think of it as, this is a good way to think of it, you have a 25 foot garden hose rolled up, you hook it up to your water, and you have a 5 foot long garden hose, and you hook it up to the water. Which one is going to flow water quicker when you turn the valve on? The 5 footer is going to flow water quicker, because it has less resistance on it. So if we ran a short hose from one of the knives right underneath the manifold, and then we run a long hose out here to the outside knife, which one's gonna flow anhydrous first? It's gonna be that short one. So by making all these hoses the same length and coiling them up, we're going to make each knife flow with the same amount of anhydrous, no matter how far away or close it is from that manifold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and I'm going to get a length from this outside knife all the way to that manifold down there. And that is the length that we will make every single hose. Now we are going to make them a hair longer so that we have two foot extra on each one. That way, like I said before, the same as the vapor lines. If they get the bolts get sheared and it kicks up and cuts the hose, kinks the hose off, we'll have a little bit of hose to work with to replace them over time. So let's get started. Gonna be a lot of lengths of the hose to make and a lot of coiling to do. So uh, let's start on these outside ones. This is my roll of hose that I'm gonna be using. This is anhydrous grade hose. It is black. Um, it's good up to 125 PSI and I believe it's like UV resistant also. So it can 
be outside and the sun doesn't bother it because a lot of these applicators they sit outside including ours you know they sit outside at, at uh, uh, co-ops and things like that they don't have enough room to keep them all inside so what I done was I uh, set the roll up on just the big blue jack stands and threw a pipe through it so I can easily pull it off so I'm gonna start pulling this off and we'll get a length and we'll start cutting well, here we go. We'll take our first hose down the toolbar. And we will leave it a hair long down here, and then that's going to set the length for the rest of them. Okay, we're going to start making our hoses now. So we've got to pull each individual one off the roll and cut it. We need 13 hoses all the same length. I'll just cut it off. Pull it. Good? Good. got to do that 13 times and then we'll probably make a few spares just to have with us we got plenty of hose on this roll so we're going to keep cutting and keep making these and then we'll start actually putting them on the applicator all right so we've got all of our hoses cut out and we are ready to start installing them so we're going to start down at this end down here and we're going to work to this end so the funny part is is this would actually be a really short hose from the manifold to this knife, but being we have to make them all the same length, it's going to be a really long ho hose. Um, and another thing, when we roll these up, we want them to lay flat up here on the toolbar. We don't want them hanging like this. We don't want them all, all messed up. We want them to lay flat so that the, the uh, liquid flows through them and doesn't get caught up in them. So uh, Kelly Engineering gave us all these tips and tricks to this. They've been doing it for years. In fact, they've even got their own anhydrous set up on their farm. So uh, they know what they're talking about because they've studied this. Um, in fact, they've run these systems for years on their farms. They've perfected them. So we're going off of everything that they told us to do. We're gonna do the same and uh, it's going to turn out really good, I think. Well, this is uh, the end results here. This is what we want it to look like. I've got this all zip tied real nice. We kept it inside the toolbar so that uh, if it gets in the brush or something along the edge of the field, we don't have to worry about the uh, hoses getting uh, tore off or anything like that. So I got this one done. I'm going to move down to this one real quick. Let me grab the camera here and I'll get you a little bit closer. So right there. So I was just looking through comments real quick and I found some of you that didn't like a comment that I made when I was putting the tracks on the gleaner. Kind of a political comment that I made. And uh told me because of that one political comment, he's not gonna watch the channel anymore. Oh well, big deal. There's plenty of other viewers out there that I think think the same way that I do, think the same way that the rest of us do. So, 
not too worried about that. Just, I can't believe he actually took the time to give me hell about it. And he told me the best of wishes. And I said, well, you can save that best of wishes for somebody else. Because I don't care. So this is how, uh, how it should look. These laying up here real nice. So, and I, I guess the viewer actually enjoys the inflation and the high fuel costs. Because I don't know about where you guys are from, but fuel's what, five fifty today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of hard to keep all this running at $5.50 a gallon fuel. It adds up pretty quick when you got four big tractors running. So, be interesting to see where we are next year. And it's really surprising that we even have any anhydrous to applicate because next year, according to what we've heard, is going to be a different story. So we're in for kind of a ride. So we don't even know if we'll be able to get anhydrous or starter fertilizer or anything that we need next year. So it's going to be very interesting. So this is what it's going to look like. We're going to go on through the rest of the toolbar and uh, make these nice little rolls of hoses here. Lay them flat like we were told to do, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. I'm getting tired, though. It's about 10 o'clock almost, so I think it's time to go home for the night. We'll finish this up in the morning. Well, here we go. The plumbing is officially done. We got all the hoses put on, got them rolled up the way they need to be, got them zip-tied flat to the toolbar to the best of our ability. Everything is strapped together. Everything is hooked up to the knives. All turned out really nice. Dad's working on right now uh, taking these hoses off because originally this applicator had a hitch on it so you could pull, uh, pull it behind the tractor. Well, for us, we took the hitch off and we put it on the three-point hitch. And when we done that, we just rolled up the extra hose and, and uh, fastened them right there in the toolbar. These hoses are in pretty bad shape, so we're going to take all that off, all that extra hose, and we're just going to get short hoses made to plug right into the tractor. Plus, we got to get these hoses made yet. But uh, the anhydrous side of things is completely done. Turned out really good. We'll jump in the cab real quick and I'll show you uh, the monitor that dad got all put in. So there's the monitor. You have your master on off and then you have your flow rate controls. So that master on off is actually for the valve back there on the applicator. So when you set it in the ground, you flip that on, turns the anhydrous flow on. When you shut that off at the end, it shuts it off. Then you have your rate one and rate two. You have your gauge out here on the fender. I should have cut that side off, but I thought, well, maybe you might eventually want to do something with that other hole so it doesn't hurt nothing. I am going to take that back off and paint it real quick. But uh, nice clean look. Everything turned out real good. So got our uh, speed sensor box right there so you need to wait until the lights light up once you turn it on and then once the lights light up that means that it has GPS lock and it's ready to go and that little sensor is up here on the mirror bracket that's all it is that little knob right there so nothing to it pretty simple setup so anyways, I'm going to get this video edited up so uh, everybody can enjoy it this evening. So I'd like to thank all the guys at Kelly Engineering for helping us set all this up, explaining a lot of stuff to us. Uh, they explained it to the point where it was easy to understand. We were able to do it here in the shop with no problems. So thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and we will see you all in the next one. The next thing today is we're going to finish this up and we're going to go check out a barn. It's got a broken beam in it. We're going to see if we can fix it and get the barn stabilized before the next storm. So thank you for watching.